Welcome to Mastara for a deep dive in, one that I've been working on for a while. The monstrous creations of the Nithians. It's no secret that the Nithians used hybrid designs to bolster their armies, twisting other creatures into new forms until they had created a living weapon. Well, it's a secret now, with the spell of oblivion and all. So which creatures are of Nithian design? How much of this is me filling in the gaps because I had to use over a dozen sources to find all the information on this? I'm Mr. Welch, and it's time to do the mash. The monster mash. The Nithia of the Hollow World does not resemble the Nithian Empire that ruled most of the known world before it was erased from memory by the Immortals. To summarize briefly, the Nithian Empire was collapsing, the river Nithia had been rerouted underground by an earthquake. The rains that once had blessed the region had been stolen to water the Candlebarth Forest by the Elves. To stop the decline, one of the last pharaohs thought the best way to reverse their fortunes was to turn everyone undead. You can't die out if you can't die. The other Immortals were horrified about this and were looking for ways to stop them. The Nithian Immortals wanted to remove the pharaoh and his followers to get the nation back on track. Isindal, the patron of elves, wanted something more extreme because it was too dangerous for the Nithians to experiment with necromancy on such a scale and to turn to the worship of entropic immortals, and also because they kept asking questions about where their reign went. So no more Nithia, no more Nithians. But a lot of Nithian-created creatures with no memory of who made them or who their master was remained. Nithian mages were the masters of creating new species. Typically by forming a new species from an old one or merging two or more creatures into a new one. They had a powerful artifact called the Pit of Corruption where they could create new species and potent magics to shape new creatures from a previous form. Not a polymorph. This change was permanent. You couldn't dispel the change. The creature would breed true if the Nithians bothered to make more of them. The creation of entire species as a whole was stopped when the future patron of Lupins, Saint Malinois, destroyed the pit during his trials for immortality. By that time, though, the gnolls were out of the bag. The first creature we know of created through Nithian sorcery was Flar, the future immortal and patron of the Hutakin. He was created to serve as the bodyguard of a wizard. He was huge, a ten-foot-tall, jet-black jackal-headed humanoid with enough muscles to get cast in a Steve Reeves movie. He was created before the Empire rose to power, but he was a sign of things to come. He wasn't a great bodyguard, because right after his creation, his master was slain by a rival. He did make for a good Avenger because he took down the rival wizard. With two huge libraries at his disposal, he became a powerful wizard on top of sporting epic level packs. Flar allied with one of the first Nithian pharaohs by helping conquer the Elysian Basin and uniting the land under the pharaoh's rule. He was posing as the Herald of Rathanos and no one was going to argue with the giant furry. He created many constructs during his mortal life and from the sources we have, his focus was living statues and a few more exotic ones like juggernauts. Flar then went off and earned immortality, creating a continuity error and a misconception. According to all the immortal source books that gave me this information, his patron was Petra, but he ascended centuries before she was born. He later created the Hutakans after the fall of Nithia. This means that Nithian created Hutakans, but they weren't Nithian in origin. Flar wanted someone to look like him, and Knowles weren't cutting it. One creature that was mentioned being created by the Nithians that gave me no small headache was the Fire Drake. Not the Flame Drake. Those shape-changing fey anarchists, but a fire drake. It was very clear in the difference. What's a fire drake? It's a dragon-like creature, classified as a dragonette from the second edition, and apparently Nithians created them. They're small for a dragon, about four foot in length. They can breathe fire, have animal intelligence, and are never mentioned in Mastara, outside of a single line of text. The Nithians probably used them for shock attacks, and they were nasty buggers. They look like a smaller cousin of the Red Dragon, and according to their stats, they are related to the Fairy and the Pseudo Dragon. They also don't appear in any official Mastara monster guides. They were created by taking elements of Red Dragons and merging them with smaller lizards to make a more manageable beast. They've probably gone extinct with the fall of Nithia. There's a good chance they required a special diet. It makes sense, you can't have somebody charming your living weapons and having them use it against you. Gnolls are the most famous example of Nithian creature creation. Legend has it they were created using gnomes and trolls to create the hyena men, because you can barely tell those two races apart. But that has rarely made sense to anyone. The current theory is that the trolls were used as spell components to merge a hyena and some beastmen into the gnoll species. Gnomes were brought in after the conquest of Faloon to industrialize the process so that gnolls could be assembly lined. Why breed gnolls and wait around for years for them to grow to maturity when you can just create them fully grown? Like uruk only with a marked increase in dust bunnies. It makes sense. The Nithians were known to use all sorts of creations to fight their wars. Why risk everyday humans when you can create something to fight for you? They made heavy use of undead and constructs in their armies. Flar conquered various territories of Nithia using all sorts of living statues and golems. Nithians still heavily use undead in both the Hollow World and Thothia. Need an army of shock troops? Make one. 
make sure they know how to fight coming out of the pit, then teach them who's in charge and tell them to go conquer people. The Knolls did their job, and they did it well. Nithian armies mainly comprised of Knolls conquered Traladara, the Northern Reaches, and much more. They were utterly loyal, created with an overwhelming desire to please the Nithians. They are considered humanoids because of their origins, compared to Therians like Lupin or Ricasta. Fun fact, the proper English word for animal-headed humanoid is Therian. The word goes back well over a century, and of course it's Greek in origin. Though if you look up the definition of it now, get ready for eye bleach because the use of the word has been hijacked. Nithia was expanding with its new Knoll shock troops. They were good boys, always wanting to make their masters happy. The Nithians adored their Knoll slaves, though the Knolls had no concept of freedom. They didn't understand the idea of free will. If the pharaoh wanted a city destroyed, he throws the tennis ball of annihilation at the enemy and the Knolls chase it. Then Nithia vanishes. The Knolls are free. They have no memory of their masters. They have no memory of why they are invading some foreign land. They have no memory of where all the rain went. So they act like what any creature in their situation would do. They go insane. Knolls are meant to take orders. They were created to follow the will of their masters without question. They got pleasure from completing their missions, and now their entire reason for existing wasn't just gone, it was forgotten. They started attacking anyone because that's what little of their memory remained. It didn't help that the one Knoll that ascended to immortality, Ranavorus, decided to become the patron of Knolls. And insanity. Knolls still love to fight, and they follow orders from other races that can boss them around. The problem is, they were meant to take orders from Nithians, not Orcs, not Minotaurs, not Thothians, or other Knolls. Their feared military prowess is long gone, now they're a raving mob with a gift for combat that they can't explain. Thules were another creation of the Nithians, but they were not considered a success. They showed what happens when you try too hard to make something work. Take a troll's regeneration, a ghoul's paralysis, and a hobgoblin's intelligence and try to create a monster out of that. What you get is wildly random results. They can be a tactical genius or a bloodthirsty monster. They were meant to be the elite troops of the Nithians, but they proved too hard to create in large numbers. Some thought it was because of including ghouls in the mix. Adding an undead element to humanoid biology does wonders for their mental stability. Because of their completely incompatible origin races, Thules were too unstable to see much use in Nithia's armies. The baseline Thule suffered from the weaknesses of its origins. The regeneration of the troll was hampered by poor intelligence. The ghoul's paralysis included its incredible bloodlust. A dislike of following orders countered the hobgoblin's weapon skills. They were not ideal for leading troops. They could barely lead other thules into combat, and their tactics could be best described as bum rush. But occasionally, one aspect of the thule would become more dominant over the others. The truk thule was more troll-like with increased size and better regeneration, though with more limited mental abilities. They were sent into the fray to soften up the enemy before regular troops. Gaz thules were more ghoul-like, with increased stealth, though at the cost of using weapons. Harthuls are more intelligent, and while not as large as the other variants, they can form strategies and sometimes even learn spells. Harthuls were what the Nithians had hoped for, but they're so rare that they don't have the number to form hordes. Then we get to the Beholder. Mastaran Beholders are not the insane masterminds determined to enslave all, born of nightmares and spawned from their own insane thoughts. Their origins were so much worse. Back in the day when Nithia was forming, they had themselves a pharaoh off. The immortal who would become Bacrius, the patron of Medusa, was fighting a war with his stepbrother, the former ruler, until Bacrius betrayed him. He used the standard Nithian troops, including many undead among his ranks, but he also had a large number of Medusa that he used for officers. Mastar and Medusa are quite different. They have two forms. The normal snake women were useful against rank and file, until one day the enemy pharaoh showed up with mirror shades on. On Mastara, Medusa are the snake-headed women of Greek myth. But when they go to their home plane of Earth, they are a writhing mass of tentacles connected to an earthen lump that floats above the ground. Sound familiar? So Bacchus needs a new weapon, and using Nithian magic, hammers the elemental form of the Medusa into what we know as the Beholder. Medusa don't have sexes. Their take on the female form is only in the prime. When they go to the plane of Earth, they return to their original form. Bacchus twisted the elemental form of the Medusa, giving them eye beams and similar, and used them to significant effect in battle until Flora arrived with his construct army. You can't petrify an army that's already made of stone. After the conflict, the Beholders proved loyal to the Nithians, happily changing sides. There they served as slave lords, troop commanders, and living weapons against all her enemies. Then Nithia was gone, along with the Beholders' memories. They remembered their hate for all living creatures, but they also remember their life had a purpose. They were never numerous, so they scattered after the fall, living solitary lives, happy to rule over their own little petty kingdoms. They still hire out for mercenary work, they feel the urge to follow, but they have hatred of those who would lead them. Worse, they don't know why. This video was difficult to make, as anyone familiar with the source material can guess. There was a lot of contradictory material. 
Supposedly, Nithya created all sorts of lycanthropes. Nighthowler contests this. They might be responsible for the man scorpions, but that's never clear. And of course, for so many famous monsters, Mastara just had to be different. Next week, we are sticking to the desert and looking for the various creatures found there. I hope you like sand. But until then, don't forget not to forget, you will forget.